use that to do the uh, the program. It's just like a it's a Unix. I guess it, so. You you can build it. I think it, it it's just like some mix package thing, or you can just download static binaries, which is probably what you should do. And uh, it runs on OS X and M1X or Mac OS. I guess it's called now. <clears throat> How much do each of the, the levels of ownership cost? I mean, there's not set prices. This is all just market. Like, like right now, it, how much are they? Uh, are they so worth? I think the galaxies. I, it's the rumor is that they were selling them for a million dollars to like investors, like when they're doing mm -hmm. fundraising. Uh, the stars right now, the market price is like three thousand dollars. They're you know on mm -hmm. OpenSea or whatever. But I think they're probably that later this year they're going to start getting more expensive once there's like Bitcoin support and there's like actual things you can do with them besides mm -hmm. that. Um, so did you set up that? Okay. I really just want a place where I can see like news articles from like a bunch of different sites without having to individually go to each site because there are no like good news aggregators. Apple News sucks, Google News sucks, you can't customize it. It's just really, like, what's that? I have before, but I don't know. I, I hate Feelings UI. Yeah, I, like I, I don't like it. Yeah. yeah, I like a I know reader or you know reader. So that was one of the motivations was I wanted to be able to have a scraper that scraped all these sites and then on the back end on my little personal server yeah. ran NLP. And so it was able to condense like, all right, these 10 have wording that's very similar. Let's condense it down to one. Mm -hmm. And then once you have this one, run more analysis toward it would just highlight. It'll automatically yeah. parse and kind of highlight like important people or important places. So you can skim through it very quickly. Yeah, that would be so cool. Yeah. So like these are things that like you need what do you really make different pieces where it's yeah. like, well, it's, I'm kind of focusing on like the infrastructure aspect of it, which is mm -hmm. like, all right, you need different pieces to, you need a server, you need a little personal server that like can scrape the data. And at, at its core, it's very similar. You, yeah. You're scraping data and you're parsing it. And then you can have network effects of like people. Mm -hmm. It's something that definitely needs to happen. It feels ridiculous that it's, it's yeah. This isn't like a complete. I, I, this is the furthest I've seen this like idea yeah. progressed. Um, yeah, but I've I've seen like other people bubbling up with like yeah. similar concepts. Yeah, like the thing is, yeah, you, there's so many problems you have to approach and try to solve yeah. at the same time that you like you really have to. I mean, this Urban has been sort of under development since I think 2002 is when when the the guys started working wow. on it. Yeah, and then like it, I think the first like instance of Arvo I think was around like 2013 and since then it's added a lot it's a lot more stable there's a lot more stuff you can do with it but I mean it's been under development for like almost 20 years but I'd, like the first like 10 years of that was just knock like working on like kind of fiddling at, at working on the, the very very core of it um okay so is it recording yeah I think you need to turn your cable on All right, so there's a couple things I wanted to pull up to show you. All right, so like I said, Urban is open source. It's all on GitHub. I think it's an MIT license. And you can look at like the whole stack just to read the Hoon code. If you understand Hoon, you can like everything, I believe everything is like compiled when you, you first boot your herb, it just downloads all this tune and compiles it for a few minutes and then you've got yourself an herb. But yeah, I mean, you can look through how everything works and it's all commented very nicely. It's about as pretty as, as he gets. Uh, there's another site, herbit.live. This is the other company that's working to develop it. These guys are in Austin. Uh, I, I think they, they have a garage downtown, or uh, they have a, a bar downtown called The Garage, is what one of the uh, guys that works there told me. I haven't been there. They but, work out of a bar. Well, they own a bar. I don't know if they work <laughs> out of it. But uh, anyway, so this it's uh, this, these guys sell planets, and uh, they're, I think, really the only business that exists so far uh, for Urban, but I think they're probably working on like eventually having like hosted services for mm -hmm. for like running your planet on their stuff. But for now they basically they sell planets. Uh, and you can take a look, they've got a really cool explorer. You can look through sigils and see all the cool planets and then send them Ethereum and get your 
planet from them. And once you've bought your planet, or you receive a planet from your friend, you go to the, you'll get a, an email, or you have a piece of paper with like a passcode basically, and you'll log in to Bridge, which is like kind of the, the interface for interacting with the azimuth contracts, like the, all the stuff running on Ethereum, the, the PKI. And so it's, it's very easy to, to interact with. It's just a web page where you click on stuff and you'll basically probably only visit this like maybe once in a while you'll visit it when you first get your planet so that you can download your key file, which it will generate for you. And let's see, you go to the admin panel, you can yeah, download your Argo key file. You can also download a passport, which is basically a paper wallet for your, your key. And uh, you can also do invites if you have any, and it'll just email people. They come here, they download the key file. Once you have your key file, oops, baby. You'll boot up your Urbit, which is just this pretty little command line. So let's see, I wrote this out a little bit. So you open a terminal in the with the folder that contains your Urbit binaries, execute it with two flags. This is the first time you're running it. You'll just execute it with the flag telling it your name and the path to your key file. It'll spend a little while booting up. I would show you, but I, I copied my planet on here because I have all my chat rooms and stuff so I can show you what it looks like when you're using it. Uh, after a few minutes of bootstrapping, your ship will be up and running and connected to the network. You can press Control D at any time to kill the, uh, your Urbit process. And one of the cool things about Urbit is that because it's like just this like playback of this log, even if your computer is like violently shut off, as long as you can get the data off, you can just play back and it, like it will return to your state. And it's, it's very cool, I think. And uh, so once in a, so your planet will also automatically download software updates when you connect. It will update your kernel like you know live without any interference. Uh, though once in a while there are continuity breaches. Eventually these won't happen anymore once it's kind of like down to its you know final frozen state. Continuity breach just means everyone has to turn off their Urbit, download a new binary, and open it again, and the network restarts. But again, like eventually that's never going to happen, and it's all going to be over the air and live. Uh, so there are two interfaces. There's the CLI, which is, uh, I think it's kind of interesting. It's got basically the dojo is the shell, and then it has, like, it also shows you your chat in the CLI, and it just kind of pops up conversations, and then you can, you can switch with a single keystroke between uh, chatting with people or entering commands or entering Hoon. It's a, it's a redevel print loop for Hoon, so you can just enter code into it and do stuff like to... Does that get pushed into the global chat? No, no, it's uh, so you have to switch between. So right now, see how it says dojo. If I hit Control X, it'll switch to chat. And I'm actually in like six chat rooms right now. And I think do that. That lists all the chat rooms I'm in, and these are glyphs, so you can see where, what room these messages are in, and you can switch between them easily. But, you, I mean, unless you're like really hacking away, you're probably not going to spend a lot of time staring at the command line. Or if you like it aesthetically for chat, I do. But there is a really nice web UI. So let's pull that up. And this is what it looks like after you log in. Uh, so there's a couple of things. There's a clock, there's weather, there's chat and publish. Publish is sort of a, an urban exclusive blogging platform, basically. It's just kind of, I think it's just built on the network or on the messaging bus. And it's uh, just like blogs, basically, if it'll open. It's a little slow. So I'm used to switching between desktops if I shortcut in a different DE. What do you mean? Um, just echo CD. Or no, 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 actually, on this laptop, it's, a, it's i3 is what I use. But I have it set up as on my desktop. Um, but anyway, so here's all the, the blogs or the, the journals that I subscribe to. These are just people on the network. It's very easy to set up a, a journal. You can tell people in chat to, you know, subscribe to it. And there's, you can set like permissions where it's like invite only or like public or whatever. Yeah. I mean, there's, it's a, there's basically one guy that posts all the time named Minderfolden. He's probably about 90% of the blog posts in here. 
But uh, there's some other cool stuff. There's anonymous urban-inspired fiction and urban-only exclusive treats, which is one of the, I got it's uh, Palda, or Palfung is one of the developers of urban. He just posts urban tweets on here instead of on Twitter. Is there a discovery service for these? Right now, it's just like someone set up a journal and said, hey, comment here with your journal. But there, really, there's only a couple dozen that even exist, I think. So there's no, I mean, there's, you can easily build one or like, I don't know, I'm sure eventually something more sophisticated will come about, but right now it's like the web in 1994. It's no, just, it's just because of the big media. Uh, yeah, well, hey, there's something to, to do if you want to. So these are like blog tweets that you can only access through Urban? Urban. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so actually, previous in previous incarnations of Urban, it had, it had like this blogging and web server stuff built in just the same, except that you could also like publish to the web, like it just, uh, it would just serve your blog on port 80 or whatever. And I, and I don't think there's anything that like technically prevents it from doing that now because it has a web server and accessing landscape through it right now. But I, I'm not sure if it's like, I think maybe they just wanted to make some kind of like exclusive urban stuff besides chat to try to get people drawn in or do stuff. I'm not 100% on that. But yeah, for now that's, that's it's just kind of the, the urban blogging platform. And here's the, the chat. So here's all the chat rooms I'm in over on the side. Urbit help is the main one, which is kind of like tech support and talking about Urbit and whatever else. Hoontards is uh, people learning Hoon. Fido.net is for discussing previous incarnations of the internet and lost futures, I think is the idea. There's a Bitcoin chat. There's a chat for people who do meetups. I'm not really sure what weird is. I don't really look at it, but. How anyway, many, so how many chat rooms are there? How many people are like using this right now? So I think probably like low to mid six figures, like on a regular basis. I mean, there's uh, I think like maybe a couple thousand stars have been issued, okay. and like you know most people probably are just you know sitting on it. But yeah. hello, so say hi to the chat. <laughs> so, uh, okay. How did you find these rooms? I don't know what. Find these rooms. So, uh, they talk about urban help, they talk about it on the website so a lot, like, ones. like tech support, and then really I think the rest of them are probably just talking, people talking at urban help saying, hey, I'm making a chat room. But There's no, like, directory of chat rooms? Mm -mm. I mean, because, of, like, I think chat rooms, well, I mean, it's they, like Discord servers. Yeah, 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 pretty much. It's, yeah. It's, Invites? I don't, I don't no, well, some, some are invite only, like the meetup one is invite, I believe, but I think most of these are public, but like, they kind of drift in and out of existence too, because it's only up if the urban is running. Mm -hmm. And I mean, most people run this on a server, so people just run it. like IRC. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> I mean, the idea is that, you know, this is a personal server, you should, if you're like serious about using it, it should probably be on all the time. Probably mm -hmm. just put it on like, you know, digital ocean or something. Um, and then let me go back here to the home again real quick. And there's also a dojo in the web UI, so you you can do command line in here. Let's see if I have any fun commands. So let's hi Zod. Oh, it's, I don't know, it's just kind of the thing you do to check if you have network connectivity. I'm not sure why it's not working. All right, and let's see. Is there a help menu? Not really. There's a website that has a lot of documentation, but yeah, it's kind There's of... There's help menu. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. There might be, I think there, there might be like some kind of help command, but I, I, if there is, I haven't used it in a couple of years. <laughs> The help command. Just tells you like basically a list of commands or something. Like that. Uh, I'm not sure. Let's find out. No. Yeah. Nope. Dash H. Something. What's that? Dash H. No, like I, it doesn't have. It doesn't use flags in the same way as, as like mixed yeah. process does. But yeah, I don't know uh, if there is one. Let me let me check real quick. Urban help command. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's basically just like looking at the documentation on the website mm -hmm. for the most part. But you can also, 
you can pull up your your urbits uh let's see the the directory that all your file like your urbit instance is stored in like physically on your computer that's like a, it's just a, a folder full of files and you can look through and, and like look at source code for stuff you can put it there's a, a folder or there's a, a thing called generators which are basically like shell scripts and you can just like write a shell script put it in this folder and then you can just run it from the command line and i think that's pretty cool um i don't know you guys have any any suggestions or questions i think the most interesting thing about it is that somebody somebody has been thinking about an idea this this big and uh, sort of transformative uh, that's what i like a lot about it the, the most. yeah yeah. Uh, I, yeah the thing I, I really like about it is that it's like a vision of a different internet that uh, i don't know there's a lot of a lot of problems that it's trying to solve that i think are very important mm -hmm. and i I hope it succeeds, you, or something like it, if not it. You yeah, know? I like I like this. Yeah, I like big ideas and this kind of idea. Yeah. Maybe if this doesn't work, then somebody inspired by it, like you, would make something. Cause it's important to have ideas like. Yeah, yeah. It's it's also just really strange. That's what drew me in is that it was so like weird and different from anything else I'd seen. Like I've I've been following like decentralization software since I was like, you know, in high school or whatever. I thought like, yeah, here's really cool. Initially, I thought it was very cool that, you know, you could have all these software configurations where people couldn't like come after you for copyright or whatever. And like, you know, the, the pirate bay getting increasingly more Byzantine and how it evades like raids or whatever. But like, it's something I, paid to, I kept paying attention to. And then Urbit, I think was the first thing that I came across there. I was just like, I do not understand this at all. Like, what the fuck is this? So I, I kind of like, I, I'm, I'm a sucker for like mystery cults or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I kind of got drawn in and it took me a while to really like make it click, but I think I get it now and I, I, I think it's very, very cool. Yeah. Oh. Well, thank you. No problem. <laughs>